Hello, welcome to another Research Methods for the Biosciences screencast for SPSS. This screencast covers section 10.6, Introduction to Parametric ANOVA, including section 10.11, Two-Way Parametric ANOVA with Equal Replicates, section 10.12, Two Keys Test following a Parametric Two-Way ANOVA, and section 10.13, Two-Way Parametric ANOVA with Unequal Replicates. This test asks how two categorical variables, term factors, affect a single dependent variable, often called the response variable, in statistical packages. The null hypothesis states that the factors have no effect and that all samples belong to the same statistical population. So why not do two one-way ANOVAs? Well, apart from the fact that the more data you have in a test, the better the model the program can produce, the two-way ANOVA allows us to ask if there's any interaction between the factors. That is, do the factors have a greater effect when combined than we might expect from simply summing their individual effects? For example, Table 10.14 gives the fresh way to two varieties of Cosmos atrosanguineus called Pip and Christopher, grown in one of four types of compost, eight weeks post-weaning from a tissue culture environment. The questions we can ask are whether any of the compost promotes superior height growth of the Cosmos variety in general, whether either of these varieties is more successful in making the transition from the tissue culture environment to the greenhouse, as measured by height. And finally, do the two varieties do better on different composts? This last question asks if an interaction occurs between the variety and compost type. The two-way ANOVA test implemented by most programs is reliable with samples that have both equal and unequal replicates, as found with the data in Table 10.19. Providing, however, the variances are similar, that is, homogeneous. Samples with unequal variances are most likely to occur with samples with unequal replicates. We can test if the variances are homogeneous by doing a version of the F-test, first on the data within the program. See Chapter 10 in the book and Box 10.7 for further details. If you get a significant result from the ANOVA, you may then wish to work out which of the samples are significantly different from each other. Some programs will give you the option of performing these so-called post hoc tests on the effect of individual factors and the interaction. So let's do the test. I have entered the data from table 10.14 into SPSS. I have given the compost and variety a number code, which is SPSS friendly, but this isn't very user friendly, and we could do with some labels. This is how I have set the variables up, and you may want to pause this screencast. I've actually started to add the labels and just need to finish it off. I'm going to track up to Variety Values, click. I'm now going to put the value 1 in the value box and 1 represents the variety PIP. I now press Add and OK. Back in Data View, I'd quite like to display the labels instead of the number codes. I do that by tracking up to this split arrow and clicking. Alternatively, I can track over to View, click and click the value label option. So let's run the test. I'm going to track across to analyze and click down to general linear model and across to univariate in the sublist that appears and click. First I need to enter my dependent variable. I'm going to select height and click the arrow to put it in the dependent variable box. My fixed factors are compost which I'm going to select and add to the fixed factor box using the arrow and variety which I do in the same manner. I now need to add some options. I'm going to go up to Model and click, and click the Custom Radio button. I'm going to go down to Build Term, select Main Effects, and select Compost, and the Selection Arrow to put it in the model, and Variety, and press the Selection Arrow to put it in the model. I'm now going to go up and click the Build Term Combo box again, select Interaction. Now I'm going to select Compost and Variety by holding down the Control button when I click the mouse, and transfer that into the model using the arrow. As you can see, it's been expressed as compost times variety. The star indicates to SPSS that I want to investigate the interaction between these two factors as well. I'm going down to press continue. I now go up to post hoc. I'm going to select compost and transfer it into the post hoc test box by using the selection arrow. I'm going to do the two key test on it. There's no point in doing a post hoc test on the variety data as there are only two varieties. Further, SPSS will not do a post hoc test on the interaction between the two factors. I now press continue. Now let's run the test by pressing OK. The test output gives us several tables, and the first table we are interested in is termed tests of between subject effects. 
In this table, we are given a p-value in the last column for the compost, variety and compost variety interaction. We can see for compost, the p-value is 0 0.285. So what is the meaning of the p-value? A p-value of 1 means we can accept the null hypothesis as true, whereas a p-value of 0 means we can accept the null hypothesis as untrue. As we travel from a p-value of 1 to 0, the transition point between true and untrue is set at 0.05 in the biological sciences. The smaller the p-value below 0.05, the more confidence we can be in rejecting the null hypothesis. A p-value of 0.285 is above our 0.05 transition value. We can therefore conclude that there is no significant difference between the heights of the plants grown in the four different composts. However, for variety, the p-value is so small it doesn't even register in the first three decimal places. We can find the actual p-value by double-clicking on the box, going out, then hovering over the value. The p-value is 2.422 times 10 to the minus 8. This is an extremely small value, and we can conclude that there is a significant difference in the height of plants based on variety. The p-value for the compost variety interaction is 0 0.068 just above our 0.05 transition value. Thus, we are not able to reject the null hypothesis and there appears to be no effect on height due to specific compost variety combinations. If we scroll down, the next table is entitled Post Hoc Test and gives us the results from our Tukey test. In column 1, we have the four composts listed. In column 2 is the compost that they are being compared to. Column 4 contains the calculated probability value. As we can see, None of these probabilities are below our 0.05 transition probability, confirming that we can conclude that there is no significant difference between the heights of the plants grown in the four different composts. I hope you found this screencast helpful. For further information on how to use this test, or the theory behind it, then please consult the book. More information on how to use the program to perform the test can be found in our online web guides located in the Resource Centre. Thank you for listening.